Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for inviting me uh, to the seminar to give a talk. Uh, and today I wanted to talk about our recent paper uh, about uh, convergence uh, guarantees for asynchronous HD uh, for distributed and federated learning. And uh, uh, it happened that uh, there is a, a very similar paper which came out uh, almost at the same time uh, uh, from these authors. And uh, so if you like uh, our work, so you should check out this paper as well. Uh, okay, so let's start uh, with a setup. Uh, so we want uh, to solve a distributed optimization problem. Uh, what this means uh, is that we have several workers uh, and every worker has its own uh, data uh, uh, connected to it. Uh, for example, like as on this picture, uh, different workers have like pictures of either dogs or cats. And the uh, overall objective is uh, to collaboratively over all uh, the workers to solve a common machine learning task, task uh, based on this local data. So we want to basically build a classifier uh, like of dogs and, or cats, while uh, different nodes have only access to like uh, different pictures, uh, like maybe not all of them. <clears throat> okay. And uh, so there are uh, two applications of uh, this distributed learning. One is federated learning, uh, it's called federated learning. And uh, what does it mean is that different workers uh, represent uh, different uh, uh, devices, like real devices, like for example, uh, hospitals. And uh, they have uh, uh, different data. For example, in hospitals, you have different uh, patients and these are some patient data. And uh, so this means what uh, your local objective function on this uh, device uh, would be uh, different uh, from each other. Uh, and this is a key feature of this um, uh, federated learning. And in our application is a distributed training in the data centers. And uh, here uh, it's mostly used uh, when you have several GPUs. Uh, on the same cluster and you want to speed up your training uh, over with GPUs and usually these GPUs have access to the full data set to some shared memory. Uh, that's why your local loss functions uh, are the same on different uh, nodes. And uh, so we will in this talk we will cover both of settings, uh, but uh, in the first part uh, we will focus uh, on the second uh, setting over data center training like for homogeneous functions. Um, Okay, and uh, okay, so let's define uh, formally the objective function which we want to optimize. Uh, so every node has like full data set and uh, our objective function is expectation or like average over all the data points in this data set over of uh, your loss function uh, on this data point and X is uh, your current model uh, which you want to like optimize. And uh, one of the uh, classical algorithms to solve this problem uh, for machine learning is called uh, SGD, Stochastic Gradient Descent. And uh, it has following form. Uh, so you compute, use like at every iteration, you sample one data point, uh, Xi, and you compute your loss function of your current model on this data point, and you apply this gradient uh, with some step size to your model uh, and you, like so on. And so this, uh, this algorithm uh, like, uh, is very simple, and so, but this is uh, for uh, sequential. So it's not distributed. Uh, and uh, so it's only like for one node. Uh, and if we wanted uh, to do distributed HD, uh, so we can extend it as following. So, uh, uh, so we have uh, like, let's say uh, four workers here on this picture. And every worker gets uh, its own data point, uh, XI, uh, to uh, like it samples uh, independently its own data point. Uh, you start at some uh, model X0 and you compute uh, your gradients at this data point. And then, uh, like, central server waits until everyone finishes. And after they finish uh, computing gradients, we send these gradients to the server and the server updates uh, its parameters with average of these gradients. And then sends back uh, its uh, it new iterate. So this is quite standard. And next, uh, like uh, we sample again. So the procedure continues the same way. Like we sample again new data points, and uh, uh, continue so on. So we can summarize uh, this procedure in this form. 
right? But uh, so it has some problem. So if we have uh, uh, some of the workers uh, are slow or like accidentally slow, then uh, at every iteration, this algorithm needs to wait for all the workers. So uh, you have some time, like when some fast workers uh, finishing uh, already finished computing, but we still uh, cannot, uh, uh, we need to wait until uh, the slow workers. And uh, this is actually like, uh, this problem also arises in practice. Uh, for example, there was a paper uh, where uh, like uh, at, they showed the delay distribution uh, for a real federated learning system at Meta. And you can see that different clients uh, were, uh, might have a different delay in, in seconds. Uh, and uh, so at every iteration, you would need to wait for the slowest one, which is uh, not ideal because most of your uh, clients are fast. And uh, so in this paper, uh, we studied a synchronous HDD algorithm, uh, which uh, solves uh, this problem and uh, it has the following form. Uh, so it starts uh, similarly. Uh, we start from some iterate x0 and uh, uh, like we compute uh, like every node uh, samples like its own data points and computes uh, stochastic gradients and then but now we don't wait until uh, like all the workers finished once some of the workers finish uh, finishing computing they send this gradient to the central server and central server immediately applies this update uh, so you we define delay uh, of this update uh, to be like iteration where you apply minus iteration at which uh, your gradient was computed. So in this case, it's equal to one. So central server updates uh, its parameter, parameters and uh, um, sends it back. And uh, this node, uh, which was free now, uh, is computing, like sampling new data point and computing new gradient at the new point. And then like, uh, let's say this uh, node, like uh, after that, let's say this node finish, finished computing uh, next, so it uh, applies with, does the same. So now you have delay equal to two because you applied iteration two gradient from iteration zero uh, and so on. Like next uh, third not uh, finished computing. So now you have uh, delay equal to three. Uh, and uh, uh, now let's say this node was uh, very slow and this node actually finished uh, computing with new gradient faster. So it does not wait for this one and uh, it uh, immediately sends it to the server. And yeah, so, and this procedure can, continues and we can summarize it uh, like, uh, like this way. Uh, <clears throat> so you apply, uh, so at every iteration, you apply some uh, stochastic gradients with some delay tau t. Uh, okay, and uh, now we can see a comparison of the synchronous uh, versus asynchronous approach. So here uh, on X axis, we have uh, time, like real time. And uh, in synchronous SGD, at every iteration, you would wait for like, so this is like how long uh, every node, let's say we have three nodes, and this is how long every node takes uh, to compute the gradient. And uh, uh, so uh, at every iteration uh, until like before going to the next gradient, uh, everyone would wait for the slowest node. Uh, so as you see here, and in a synchronous SGD, this is not the case. And uh, you can like this node, it was faster and it can continue for the next gradient uh, uh, like, and not like have any waiting times. So it has advantage uh, in this and okay, so this is all good. And uh, the question uh, is uh, uh, if uh, like what happens with conversion rate, right? Because if you use uh, some delayed gradients, it might hurt you. Uh, and this is what we try to answer in this paper and uh, uh, Okay, but before going to convergence rate, we need to define uh, two quantities. Uh, so this is our algorithm and we define the maximum delay as maximum over all delays which you saw during your training and the average delay as the average of M. <clears throat> so let's look at convergence rates. So this asynchronous HGD algorithm is not new. We did not propose it uh, and uh, it uh, was known before and uh, all previous convergence rates of it uh, were, were dependent on this maximum delay uh, so, so it has like, like, okay. So, so here I show conversion rates uh, for non-convex smooth functions. Sigma here is stochastic noise of gradients. And uh, okay, so this conversion rate consists of two terms. Uh, one is the stochastic noise term and second uh, is uh, uh, this uh, optimization term uh, and it depends on maximum delay. 
And uh, so in, in this work, uh, we actually improved uh, this algorithm uh, without uh, changing uh, it at all. So, so it like uses constant step size at every iteration. Um, and uh, um, so we, instead of this maximum delay, we replaced it with square root of maximum times average delay. Uh, and uh, now if you if we assume extra assumption on uh, if like bounded gradients, so the gradients are bounded uh, at uh, every point x, then we can completely remove this maximum delay, uh, but have like this middle term. So we can have dependence only on the average delay here. Uh, okay, and uh, so one, uh, so how did we do it? How did we improve this convergence rate? So uh, one of the observations uh, which we used is uh, uh, the number of nodes is uh, like approximately up to constant equal to the average delay. Uh, okay, and so so this is uh, quite uh, uh, simple. I, I, so so you you can verify it quite simply. I will not uh, explain it now, but uh, if someone has questions, I can explain this uh, in more detail. Um, okay. So, so, but the intuition here is like if uh, one of the nodes is delayed uh, for too long, then the other nodes uh, have to like respond uh, because uh, you have to continue like uh, to next iterations. Uh, okay. Okay, so, and uh, using this, we can uh, uh, improve uh, our like uh, convergence rate to uh, this, uh, like to square root of maximum times average delay. And uh, okay, so this was uh, for constant step sizes, uh, like at every iteration. And now if we want to improve it even more, we can use delay adaptive step sizes, uh, which um, uh, so like the step size depends on delay which you see. And uh, so the, our like the delay adaptive step size uh, scheme is the following. So if your delay, which you see is smaller than two times average delay, and you know this average delay uh, is uh, basically equal to number of nodes. So you say if you de delay which you see is smaller than two times number of nodes, then we use a constant step size. Let's say this delay is not too big, it does not hurt much, so we use this constant step size. And if a delay is uh, bigger than this, then we weight it down by uh, delay, basically by current delay tau t. Uh, and so we actually like uh, you, what you can notice here, we can make uh, our step size uh, smaller than this value and uh, we can set it even to zero. And if we set it even to, if we set it to zero, it means that we just drop gradients, we don't apply them. Um, um, <clears throat> and uh, so like in practice, you don't introduce any extra hyperparameters in this uh, delay adaptive scheme. You can just uh, have this like tau average, uh, like so. So you you like just need to uh, just need to tune this eta bar, uh, and then you can rate it like this. And you know tau average is a number of thoughts. Um, okay. And uh, if we use this uh, uh, step size scheme, scheme uh, then we can uh, get uh, the following convergence rate, uh, and it depends only on the average delay. So before with constant step sizes we can get square root of tau max tau average. And now we can uh, get only a dependence on the average uh, uh, delay in convergence rate. Uh, okay, and uh, like um, the proof idea is quite simple. So we just need to notice that uh, there are only uh, at most, so, so uh, with a delay uh, bigger, like with delay smaller than two times uh, tau average, there are at least half of the gradients. So there are actually not so many gradients uh, which uh, have bigger delay than two times tau average. Uh, and this is uh, because uh, all the delays are bounded by zero, uh, um, or actually bounded by one. So like, so this is like for any distribution. So if a delay is bounded by zero and uh, the number of uh, uh, tau t, which is bigger than two times tau average is not too big, is like not uh, more than half. And so actually, and because we are not more than half of them, if we drop all of them, we will hurt our conversion rate only by a constant factor of two. Uh, and uh, if and if we drop uh, like all of them, then the maximum delay of the ones which we apply will be um, two times tau average, right? Because we just dropped uh, all the rest. And uh, when simply if we use the old conversion rate with this maximum delay here, 
we can replace it like by two times my tau average, right? And we would replace t by t over two, right? But this is just all the constants, right? And uh, uh, we get the uh, tau average conversion rate. Uh, okay. And uh, so, so just like to notice, uh, I mean, the full proof is a bit more complicated because we allow also for non-zero step sizes, but uh, like the idea is basically this. Um, okay. And okay, so all of this is good, but why do we even care about this uh, average and maximum delay? Uh, and uh, okay, so you could maybe infer it from this picture. Uh, and in some cases, uh, I mean, it's not in all cases, but in some cases, average delay could be much smaller than maximum delay. So um, let's consider the following example when we have two nodes and uh, one node is uh, never responding until the last iteration. So when uh, tau max is equal to t, and the not second node is always responding, and it basically does all the iterations. So its delay is always uh, one, uh, and average delay would be equal to two, uh, because you have two nodes, and you can, yeah, we had this before. Okay, and uh, uh, so now if we look at all like these convergence rates, so the old one, uh, what would say? You have, uh, depending on tau max, so you put tau max equal to t, like for this example. And when you say like this conversion state says uh, you actually can converge to the optima, you just converge uh, to like around the optima, like up to constant to the optima. When the second conversion state, if we put tau max equal to t, tau average equal to two, when it says that we actually can converge to a true optima, but uh, a bit slower, like uh, this, uh, it was one over t before, right? And now it's one over square root of t but still can converge. And this uh, average delay, right, we just put it equal to two. So it's basically says you're actually not affected by this. Uh, and okay, it makes sense because most of the iterations uh, uh, were like with no delay uh, and you would drop this one. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so we are, uh, so like our, uh, so we are not the first to, to work on this topic and there have been like some papers uh, and uh, like one paper like uh, was recently uh, is called like pro proposed an algorithm called the PKGD. And uh, they also achieve the same convergence rate. So they, pro and they, what they do, they propose also some delay adaptive uh, uh, scheme and they draw the gradients which are too much delayed. But uh, to understand the, like if gradients are too much delayed, we need to additionally transfer the iterates like uh, together with gradients, also the point at which this gradient was computed. And uh, we need to also uh, to have one extra hyperparameter uh, and we need to tune this threshold, threshold when you drop the gradients. Uh, and so we don't need like for our uh, delay adaptive step size, we don't need uh, to do this. And okay, so we also allow like our step sizes are a bit more flexible and we allow to soft drop them and we don't. Uh, uh, so this is like the difference. And there was in our uh, paper also like uh, at the previous new reefs. Uh, and uh, they have also dependence on the average delay, but uh, they assume bounded gradients and uh, yeah, also bounded domain. And uh, so the rate is uh, slightly worse uh, as well. Uh, okay. And uh, so now let's compare it to synchronous uh, optimization. Uh, so if we, like, so, so here I show the error after uh, T gradients computed and the mini batch SGD. Uh, so it's like this first algorithm which I described. Uh, it uh, converges with this rate where N is number of workers and asynchronous SGD would converge uh, with, with this rate uh, with average delay. And uh, we know what average delay up to constant is equal to N. And uh, um, this means what we like in terms of number of gradients computed, we have uh, the same convergence rates. But we also know because uh, asynchronous SGD does not have any waiting time of nodes in the same unit of time, it can compute uh, gradients faster. Uh, so, and so this means what overall uh, it's uh, faster, like in terms of like real time uh, uh, of compute. Okay, so this is uh, all uh, for this first part. Uh, and uh, if you have some questions uh, about it, uh, it's a good time to ask them. Yeah. 
Okay, and uh, okay, if there are no questions, but feel free to interrupt me at any point. Um, and if there are no questions, I will continue. Um, okay, and uh, um, so we have here, uh, so the next, uh, so this was all for homogeneous functions, all this theory. Uh, and actually like the interesting case, if we want to do federated learning is uh, when every node has different functions because they might have different data. And uh, 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 so it has its own uh, 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 difficulty. So uh, so like there is a problem, right? Like if one node is never responding, you don't see the data at all. So you actually cannot have hope to converge to the true optima, uh, even with constant step size. Uh, okay, and uh, so we propose an algorithm which goes a little bit around uh, it. Uh, and uh, so what uh, we propose for, to do for federated learning is uh, following. We, let's say we have uh, like, this is uh, a pool of workers and it's very large. Uh, it has like N workers. And uh, we have some active worker set of size C, uh, S and S is smaller than N. Uh, okay, and we have some central server. And uh, so at the first uh, iteration, uh, or like at some iteration, uh, so so we sampled uh, like S workers, and they computed uh, started to compute gradients uh, at these points, and uh, so and, and the algorithm is very si similar. Uh, so once let's say one node is finishing uh, computing, it sends uh, like its gradient uh, to a central server, uh, and the uh, central server applies uh, this gradient uh, to its iterate. Uh, so it's all the same. And now, uh, in, like we like for this spot, we sample uniformly out of the pool of all workers, uh, a new worker. And it could be the same as uh, the worker, which is already busy here. Uh, and uh, uh, so, and we assign like this uh, point T plus one to this worker to compute. And so if we uh, like sampled because we sample uniformly out of all workers, so we could sample the same worker twice. And if this happened, uh, when it's basically jobs on these workers are getting uh, stuck. So it would first compute this, then it would compute this. Okay. And uh, so, and, and this is like the way to basically ensure what uh, none of the nodes is delayed uh, for too much, because if node black, let's say never responds, you would, like at, at like some point, it would fill all the active worker set and it would need to do an update. Like it would need to free some spot to continue training. So it's just like we implicitly assume what uh, nodes uh, are not delayed for too much. Uh, okay, and uh, so we can have the same uh, observation here is what this active worker set is uh, equal to average delay. And uh, uh, okay, so we can, like look at conversion rates. So we've been like a very similar algorithm. Uh, uh, and uh, so we uh, gave conversion rates uh, for it. Okay, so, so maybe I will explain assumptions. Uh, we have stochastic noise sigma. And because uh, uh, functions are different on different nodes or on, on different clients, uh, we define this function dissimilarity zeta as difference of local gradients uh, to a global gradient. Uh, and, uh, okay, so we uh, give convergence rate for smooth non-convex functions. Uh, okay, and, okay, so a previous convergence rate of algorithm, which is very similar to this, uh, was depending on this maximum delay. Um, and uh, so, and, and very similarly uh, as uh, to the homogeneous case, uh, we also improve, uh, like, without any change, or like, uh, or, or in the algorithm, we improved convergence rate like this. Uh, we have like this last uh, term, which depends on maximum times average delay instead of maximum delay. And this middle term, which depends on uh, zeta, like this uh, function dissimilarity, it depends only on the full average delay and uh, on the average delay. Like, so this tau average i is average delay on the not i. So every node has its own like average delay, like it could have different uh, speeds. And uh, so this is, uh, so you multiply each zeta i with uh, corresponding average delay. And okay, so similar here, if you assume uh, bounded gradients, then you can completely remove dependence on the maximum delay and you can have only dependence on the average delay. 
Uh, okay. And uh, okay. And like before, we did uh, some delay adaptive step sizes. Uh, and uh, uh, okay. So before, um, we did some delay adaptive step sizes. And uh, so, but now uh, it will it will not work uh, because uh, it can bias uh, your function because like let's assume like if some nodes are fast and some nodes are slow, this means that uh, your delay adaptive step size to fast workers will give more weight, so it, it will generally go with higher step size rather than slow nodes, and this means that you cannot actually converge to the true optima and uh, like. And actually, like so, in this uh, concurrent work, we actually quantified uh, how far away so so we like applied these delay adaptive step sizes to federated learning objective, and we quantified uh, how far you can uh, like how far your function can converge. Uh, so it's actually like up to this uh, heterogeneity zeta. So if you're interested in this, you can look at this paper. Uh, and uh, okay, and uh, okay, but uh, so we can have some extra assumptions uh, to still make it work. Like for example, uh, if uh, like no like uh, indexes and delays are not correlated, uh, then of course we can apply this. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, if like, let's say uh, we have, we assume that we have like so many nodes, but like once a uh, gradient arrives to the server, it is uniform, like over all uh, nodes. Uh, so, so, so like the client uh, of his gradient is uniform over all nodes, then we can also uh, have like apply delay adaptive step sizes and uh, still converge uh, to the true optima. Uh, okay. And uh, okay, so also another uh, thing uh, like so about uh, this delay adaptive step sizes. So in classical federated learning uh, applications, uh, usually, uh, like so, so usually how uh, algorithm works. So you sub sample some number of nodes, and then you wait like some number of clients, and then you don't wait for all of them, but let's say you wait for ninety percent uh, of them, and you actually discard the rest, right? And uh, if you compare like your algorithm, like so, so like with uh, with a learning rate scale, like asynchronous HGD with learning rate scaling, to this algorithm, it might be uh, what. Is if you don't discard slow nodes, but you weight them down, you might even uh, converge closer to the original objective uh, rather than uh, uh, like uh, this other algorithm, which uh, is usually used in practice. Uh, so and uh, so when you would have uh, like you would not hear conversion rate uh, by by that. Um. <clears throat> okay, and uh, so this is uh, more or less uh, it. Uh, uh, and uh, so, like, uh, there are several future directions of this work. Uh, so one is uh, like so our algorithm which we proposed uh, for this asynchronous uh, federated learning might be not uh, very practical if some nodes. Uh, so it does not allow the nodes to be like to drop uh, or like to be delayed for a long time. And so what to do in this case? Uh, so this is a question. And uh, so what like so in like and another question is uh, in con convergence rates uh, don't show so show what uh, asynchronous uh, SGD should converge uh, like should have comparable performance uh, to mini batch SGD but what happens uh, in reality for deep learning uh, so this is a question if it affects uh, generalization or not uh, and uh, so yeah and if it affects uh, how to close this gap uh, okay so yeah so. If you have some questions, I would be happy to answer them. Uh, I think uh, I was a little bit fast. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And indeed, we are ahead of time somehow. But uh, OK, plenty of time for discussions. So are there any any questions from the audience on the, in particular? Please, I mean, raise your hand or write the question in the chat, and then we can and read it out as well. OK, maybe, maybe uh, as long as people are thinking about questions, <laughs> I could ask something. So uh, the, the first part, you presented some results. And the result basically showed that you have to drop uh, gradients that are 
delayed for too long in order to get this dependency on the average uh, delay. But uh, mm -hmm. I think it's basically just one strategy that gives you this, uh, allows you to prove this dependency on the average delay. So, so do you uh, think it's possible to prove that one has to drop these gradients or is it uh, unclear? Yeah. The... So, so I mean, uh, you don't have to drop these gradients, right? You can apply them, but with a smaller uh, step size, uh, right? Uh, but if your question is like, if you use constant step sizes, right? Yeah. And if you could like still prove uh, like this average delay and uh, the answer is no, so we actually did some experiments. Uh, uh, okay, so my, yeah, so I think it's not possible because, uh, like, let's say in this example, uh, like if like this uh, node arrives uh, with a gradient like at like at uh, point zero, mm -hmm. it would apply it uh, with the same weight, right? And you would move. Uh, your function too much at the last iterate, right? And this is the iterate at which you measure your function. So if you don't weight it down, uh, it would uh, like introduce quite uh, like, so, so it would move you like too much. So you would not uh, be able to show what you have no effect of this. Okay, yeah. No, no, I think it, it makes sense, but yeah. Yeah, I think we, and also the other paper does not have a proof uh, oh, yeah, of like okay. a lower <laughs> bound that does not work, but uh, yeah. Since, uh, yeah, nice. Okay, so we have one question in, in the chat. So, so Marina, do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question live? Hi. Maybe you can do this. Hi, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Ah, perfect. Uh, thank you, Anastasia, for, for your presentation and your work in general. Yes, it's very good. Um, I was wondering, so I understand what you explained about um, the problem that you have if you drop gradients in the case of heterogeneity in data. But I was mm -hmm. wondering if in your convergence rates, you see the effect of this heterogeneity um, explicitly. So, and whether you see this correlation of uh, basically the problem arises if you have uh, stragglers or nodes that take a very long time in reporting their gradients, only if they have uh, rare data, right? Like new data. Mm -hmm. If it's nodes that have basically the same distribution as any other node, I guess that wouldn't be a great problem, right? So yeah. So do you see okay. the correlation? Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for your question. You can actually, so we have this convergence rate, right? And you can actually see this middle term, right? So you have uh, here, uh, okay, this average delay, but when the average of this zeta i's and times uh, corresponding average delay of this node. And so if uh, your local function is very close to the global function, right? Uh, mm. So if heterogeneity is small, then this uh, zeta i would be close to zero. Right, and even if you multiply it by big average delay on this node, so this term would be still zero. So you can actually see this in uh, this convergence rate, uh, but not in the last term. Last term is still like the square root of maximum times average, but it's the same as for homogeneous functions. All right, nice, nice. Yes, it's very clear now in that term uh, now that you pointed out again. Thanks. Yeah, yeah thanks for your question. Okay, so Aurelia is asking something. I think you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, join. Hello, thanks a lot uh, for, for the nice talk. Uh, I wanted to ask about generalization actually. So you said a few words uh, in, okay. in, in the end about that. So I'm wondering a bit, what is your intuition on this? So, so I was thinking there might be some relations maybe to recent work that consider generalization of decentralized SGD, which show that maybe having some kind of sparse topology isn't that bad maybe for generalization. So maybe you can think of this also as having, I mean, this maybe relates to delays, right? Because if you have a sparse topology, then it means some nodes uh, take a lot of time to kind of propagate their information. So I was wondering a bit what intuition you have on this generalization both in theory and maybe if there are practical experiments that study this already i'm not really aware of, of that yeah okay thanks for the question so uh so it's not uh, yeah so so 
it's not exactly similar uh, as in uh, uh, decentralized because uh, if you look at conversion rates of decentralized uh, SGD, let's say, it would be it would show but it's slower like when uh, centralized. But here you don't have this like with this delay adaptive step sizes, you don't have uh, uh, so you have actually exactly the same conversion rate like so for homogeneous functions, right? So when uh, yeah so and so I think it's yeah I know. Yeah, so we did not do uh, experiments. Uh, so I did not do experiments uh, myself on uh, deep learning, uh, but I would still expect that it might be uh, slower because it's you either way down or uh, like, so you still might have this generalization gap. Uh, but yeah, but I, I don't know exactly. Uh, yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, maybe I would have one quick question. So uh, you have this uh, setup in federated learning uh, where you only communicate like a one gradient at the time. Uh, do you also have a version where you would have uh, like where you would wait for like uh, for a couple of gradients and then average them and then update something like similar to I think the this, this fed buff. Or yeah, is it okay. like, uh, how, how, how would you extend your algorithm? Would you have like the, let's say like B active sets or would you pick like a bigger, bigger active set? What would be like kind yeah. of the extension that you would do? <clears throat> yeah, okay, thanks for the question. So um, uh, yeah, so it so, so basically uh, Samuel asks uh, like if you, yeah, if you have like here you wait only for one node but you might wait uh, just for a bunch of nodes. And uh, so we did not do this in the paper, but it's not so uh, difficult to extend our work to this setting. So you would, I think all the proofs would follow more or less similar way. You just, at every iteration, you would just average uh, like, I don't know, several uh, workers. Uh, and you would wait for like, let's say first K workers, which finish. Yeah, and we just did not want to complicate our proofs. Uh, so that's why we didn't include this version, but uh, I believe it's not really hard to extend to this. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, if this answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, maybe I can also comment on like previous uh, question of I and uh, so like we did some experiments on uh, convex functions and you could see uh, like what, what uh, um, so so what uh, asynchronous HGD is actually almost converges almost similarly as uh, synchronous like SGD uh, in terms of number of gradients. So I actually, so uh, yeah, so it really needs to be checked uh, like what happens in deep learning. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if there is a, <laughs> we have a lot of time for discussion, but uh, I mean, there seems no question in the chat. So so we, we, we maybe stay here for one, two minutes. Okay, Elnur has uh, raised his hand. So that's, uh, please go ahead. Okay, um, thank you for a great talk. So I have a question of the following kind. Usually when we talk about asynchronous algorithms, the most of the uh, papers they they have an assumption which says that we have maximum maximum delay and yeah it makes sense because we don't have to we don't have we want to have clients which don't uh, which are not responsible at all but it mm -hmm. seems like you do not have this assumption and how do you like uh, so, do I guess right that you sorry I yeah yeah you yeah continue here. yeah do, do I guess right that you overcome this problem by using this stochastic sampling of clients. Yeah, so kind of, but uh, we kind of still have this implicit assumption on the maximum delay, right? Uh, and uh, so, so let's let's say let's consider the case that this black node is delayed and it never responds, right? When what will happen at every iteration? You have uh, like some probability one over n to sample this black node again, and uh, so in expectation uh, after wait, yeah. 
so, so after s time uh, n uh, iterates all of them all of these nodes will be black right if black nodes all like if you sample black node it will not go out right so it's like after s time n uh, iterations uh, your algorithm is stuck with only black nodes and black node has to respond. So when this is like the uh, bound on your maximum delay allowed it, like in expectation. Uh, and uh, so it, it's like, if you have like large N, if you have like million of clients, right? This is not a problem because probably this will never, you will probably never even sample it twice, right? But okay, for small number for like, uh, yeah, for small number of uh, clients, so this algorithm is really not practical, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, so in this concurrent work, we proposed a different algorithm which would uh, uh, not sample, which would sample clients only out of available ones, right? We would not sample twice the same client, but we would not converge to the true optima. So basically, depending on your case, you can decide what you want to do. Like maybe if your n is small, maybe it's better to use a way algorithm. Uh, did did this answer your question or yeah it does thank you okay. thanks okay so we have uh, one uh, one question in the chat so okay thanks for your talk <laughs> and uh, okay the question is would you think your analysis of asynchronous SGD could be extended to like decentralized yeah. SGD with also asynchronous uh, yeah. updates? So, so I can maybe, yeah, I can ask to unmute the person that asked, but uh, otherwise, <laughs> no. Question is basically hello. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you for the talk. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, so in this decentralized, uh, so there are some asynchronous decentralized algorithms, but we usually assume, like, let's say, uh, that uh, every node has some constant frequency uh, to compute. And we looked a bit in decentralized asynchronous, and it does not seem to be so easy to extend this work to decentralized setting because you might, like, locally, you might not know. So, so, so assume you have like, you are like a node, right? And you have some workers, like let's say two, two, two neighbors, which are like, uh, yeah, you have only two neighboring workers. And uh, if you compare like your iteration, your current iteration count to your neighboring iteration count, uh, uh, you, you cannot know, like you don't know how many uh, updates were done overall in the graph, right? Because you can know on the difference between your and your neighbors, right? And you cannot know your uh, like global delay, right? You can only know your relative to your neighbor's delay, right? And so when it makes, so this uh, fact makes it hard to extend uh, this work to decentralized uh, setting. So you don't know like how much do you want to weigh down your updates, even if you have homogeneous functions. Uh, like or like it, so you might know like the full number of nodes but you don't know your current delay and this is the problem yeah so yeah i don't know how to do it maybe it's possible to do it only based on local information but uh, yeah so this needs, this requires uh, some work uh, this is not so obvious uh, okay uh, i hope this answers your question yes thank you for your answer thank yeah, you thank Yeah, we have one more. Uh, yeah, uh, may I ask something about what you just said? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I there are some works on decentralized optimization that, in order to to deal with delays, they have to um, add the assumption of bounded delays. So, do you think this would help you? Like, if suddenly you say, yeah. "Okay, I wait no more than this much." 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, you have, yeah, okay. So if you have assumption on bounded delays, like let's say you have like all delays are bounded by maximum delay, then uh, there are some algorithms uh, which uh, can converge, but all the conversion rates depends on this maximum delay. Uh, and yeah, and what I was talking is like, if you could improve it and if you could have similar improvements in terms of maximum versus average delay, and uh, yeah, this is unclear. But yeah, but if you have this bounded uh, delay assumption, yeah, then you can have some algorithms uh, uh, which would converge uh, in decentralized optimization. All right, got it, thanks. <laughs> So there are like some algorithms which are uh, based on this gradient tracking or like push pull, uh, and uh, also like this similar like decentralized uh, HGD algorithms. Uh, but and, and some of them uh, also consider like uh, assume that you should have a constant frequency. Like every node has constant frequency when you compute. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so uh, yeah, very, very good. I think, yeah, we had uh, quite a lot of comments. So if, uh, and we, we, I think the talk ended a bit uh, ahead of time. So we can also maybe stop the questions ahead of time. So unless there is now somebody with some urgent comment or additional uh, remark, which I think is very nice. We, uh, yeah, I think we can end it here. And thank you again, Anastasia, for. Uh, joining and giving this uh, talk and uh, yeah both papers uh, are on archive uh, you can <laughs> check yourself uh, or all the details and uh, yeah it was nice having you all here and uh, see you for the next uh, seminar thank you yeah thanks a lot uh, again for inviting me thank you Nastya. very nice results congratulations thanks <laughs>